Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, we're on the precipice of 3.14, and I know I use that word. I'm pretty proud of myself because that is a way bigger word than what I would normally use. Um, all right, so I obviously I put a post up the other day just uh, putting my feelers out there to figure out, I guess, what people want to see, what would help people. The other thing you'll notice is I do have a new mic, so hopefully that hissing sound that was coming into my videos is no longer coming into my videos, which would be good. So, what are we doing in this video? Well, you clicked on it because it clearly says it on the video description, but there was a poster on there uh, under the name of uh, Domestic. Dear, and I'm pretty sure I'll edit a clip of the post, but uh, it had five likes, including my own like. Um, basically, the question that uh, that he's got there is, I'm struggling to understand mapping, I get the basic concept, but I feel like there's a point where I'm just slapping in watchstones and running whatever maps without any purpose. Yes, there is a purpose. And we're going to talk about it in four basic, I guess, mapping steps, basic tips that I'll give you for mapping. Now, very first off the mark, and I'm probably going to have some sort of uh, thingo on the screen. I'm working with this new thingo that has flames, so it'll probably have flames. Step one, and I guess I want to make this very clear. Don't try and keep up with the Joneses when it comes to mapping. You'll hop into global channels, you'll talk to friends who don't have jobs, um, and you'll see streamers. By day two, they'll be on T10 up to T16 maps. Don't use that as an example for how you should proceed with mapping and lose purpose because it feels like you're not keeping up with people. Just ignore those people. Like, I myself don't get to full map completion before the end of two weeks, um, normally. And it slows down with work and everything else that has got that goes on in life. Life happens. You're not going to have time to grind out, you know, five hours of POE a night. If you can fit in five hours, and I'll be trying to in between everything, I'll be working away over the coming months, and I'll be doing it all via laptop in uh, the middle of nowhere with a uh, 4GX connection. But you're not going to get enough time to get to map completion. Yeah, you may not get to map completion until the end of the, the first month of the league even, just depending on your schedule, school, university. You know, put your studies first. Don't put video games first. Study is always critical. Um, so the first part, part of this video is essentially the first tip. Don't worry about what other people do. Fuck them. Do it at your pace. It's important to map at your pace and enjoy mapping. And now we get that out of the way, we get to talk about the fun stuff. So, I decided to rip out all of my maps for the lols, uh, all of my watchstones, sorry, for just the lols, um, because that's gonna be fun to put these all in, though you can hit control and it'll put the watchstone wherever it's supposed to go, wherever the hell that is. It went somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where it went. Ah, oh, it just went into my inventory, God damn it. Um, so anyway, what is the strategy? When you first see a map, you're gonna get challenged with, you know, bam, you're gonna get four, you'll get a choice from uh, Kirak of four maps at the very start. There'll be T1 to uh, four, I think, or T1 maps, and they'll probably be, you know, Jungle Valley in this case, Coves, Arcade, and Pen. All right, that's gonna be the very start to when you get to Endgame and you start mapping. So, the most important part of when you start mapping and ignore all the other elements of mapping, just strip it all away, let's strip it back to basics, is mapping relies on building your early map pool up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna run these maps and you're going to basically hope to God that you get more drops within the maps. First of all, and by doing that, run ALKs on your maps and if you can't run ALKs, chance your maps to try and get a uh, get a, a, a rare rarity roll on your maps. Now, don't start dropping sextants on maps straight away. You can do that, I wouldn't advocate for it. That's more of a, as you start to progress through the map system sort of strategy. But the first step is build out your map. So start with your T1 map, and then basically look for maps as you go that you haven't yet completed. So go back to your atlas and go, bam, hey, have I completed this? The other thing that you can do on maps as well, and if we go to the tab, 
So as you go, if you've got a map stash tab, look at the map stash tab, look at the, uh, the challenge bonuses at the bottom of the tab. So what I'll usually do is say, say I've got, you know, a map here, this map here. I'll basically just seat these in the map stash tab and go, have I done them? The other thing that you can do is by holding, I wish I had prepared for this video. Ah, there we go. So by hitting Alt on your maps while they're in your inventory, it'll tell you whether you've done the bonus. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do in this situation is you're going to want to make sure that you're completing all the maps that are coming up. Now, if you have duplicate maps, I'll talk about what you do with that. But basically, just keep running those T1 to four maps, T1 to five maps, sorry, for as many maps as it takes to build up your map pool. Basically, build up a shitload of these T1 maps build up a shitload of these T2 maps and basically work towards completing all of these maps up to T4 around abouts until you got a few gaps, but not too many. So by this time, I guess this will feed into the next part of the video, but we'll talk about what you can, what you basically need to do in this first step. So by building out your maps in the early part of the mapping sequence, you build up your map pool so you start to basically unlock all of these maps. So as you see watchstones in, you'll get more and more drops of maps and you won't have to work as hard as you go through. What you'll find in most circumstances, it's easier just to do and unlock all the maps at T1 through to five if you can get them. And then basically you're more focused on doing the additional objectives such as running the maps corrupted and then running the awakened bonuses and whatnot. The actual pooling of maps shouldn't be the hardest part of the mapping sequence. The hardest part is doing the harder maps and unlocking the furthering of maps as you go and unlocking the bonuses. And as you can see, I don't really focus on that too much. A lot of people focus on it. But anyway, that's the first, I guess the first piece of advice that I would give you. Build up your map pool. Now, some ways that you can build your map pool um, is by going to Zana and basically just cashing out on all of these low tier maps and you know you'll basically you'll find plenty of maps within here as as they reset each day for uh, or as you complete more maps um you'll, you'll basically just keep churning through maps here so if you get stuck and you can't find a map check zana she might have it in her inventory and you can buy it off her for a few chance orbs so always pick up your chance orbs in early league as well um, because they're quite useful in mapping now the other thing that you can do is they'll start dropping pretty early up is start running uh, or start orb of horizoning your maps so you might have you know for example um, if we look at maps you might have a bunch of t3 maps that are you know belfry and everyone hates belfry because it's a shit map but you might basically you might have like 20 orbs of horizon so, and you know that you need to get glacier maps so you can buy and generally the general gist is if you um, horizon maps they'll basically re-roll maps within a similar region and a, where possible and or a similar level so if you want more t3 maps to get map completion then run your orbs of horizon to unlock those other maps or open up the capability of running those maps elk them and then run them unlock them that's going to increase the probability of more maps dropping and rarer maps dropping the other thing that you can do also is make sure when you do your map device you run your zana missions um, running your zana missions early up so when you run zana missions those missions that you actually run within maps can unlock more maps and target maps that pop up that basically you haven't done yet that you've been really faffing around trying to get you might find that in the zana mission it might just randomly pop up and usually it's maps from all different zones um, and then basically run your Zana missions and do map completion in Zana. And you could actually walk away with completing two maps off of your Atlas before you know it. You know, each time you go in, run your Zana mission if you've got them, bam, Bob's your uncle, unlock more maps. So that's pretty much the first step. So the first step is don't stress too much, map pool up as much as you can. The other thing that you can do is you can also trade triplicates of maps. So say you have three courtyard maps at a certain level, right? So I've got three courtyard maps here, go to Zana. Okay, I've got three courtyard maps, but I need a tier four map, bam. You put three in, you get an academy map. You may not have done this map. In my case, I've done this map, um, but you know, you get an academy map. So that's another way that you can do it. There's a few different ways you can do it without having to go and trade for maps because that can get very expensive, especially in the early league. Um, but just use the mechanics of the game to natively pull maps. Now, 
Do this before you start worrying about watchstones. And we'll talk about watchstones at the very end. That's the fourth part we'll talk about. But right now, step two, aside from ignoring everyone is step one. Step two, pull your maps in whatever way you can and basically focus on ticking each one of these maps off. And where you don't have that map, Horizon Orbit, Zana Mission it, check Zana's store for it, or trade in three maps, get a, a map of a higher tier and then basically work towards getting all of your one through to five completions done. And basically what I'll do is I'll continually refer back to here. I'll look for gaps and openings. So I haven't actually done the Belfry, uh, the, the Belfry um, Awaken objective because I'm lazy and I don't really care about it right now because we're at the end of the league. But I could go back and do that. I'm not worried about that right now. So anyway, once you've got enough of a map pool and you, you've built up and you've done enough completion because the other, other side of map completion is that as you complete maps, you get a increased chance of 1%, I think it's 1% or a certain percentage. Um, in my case right now, because I've, I've got you know, 153 of 164 maps done, I've got a 53% chance for maps to drop two tiers higher. And then each bonus objective you complete increases by 1%. So the more maps, uh, the more map completion you do, the higher the percent, uh, and the, the, the map bonus completion that you do, the higher the chance of getting better maps. So that's why you need to complete your atlas earlier. Now, by the time you get to running T4 map, uh, T4 and T5 maps, normally what will happen is you will have citadels drop. Now, Understanding citadels is important in mapping because this is going to tell you how to target your watchstones. So normally what will happen is your early citadels will open up in here because you'll get maps in here first. So your first four, you, you think of your map. If Right, so you start in the center. You've got your four quadrants in either side and then you're going to spread out and branch into these outer quadrants. Now. Normally what will happen is it'll take one watchstone uh, to basically unlock, uh, I guess, um, to spawn conquerors and then conquerors will spawn more watchstones or will give you more watchstones as you complete them. Now, the way that citadels will work is generally there is no set standard to citadels. You run a certain amount of maps in a region. You get that region up to about T5. Well, you basically get it up to T4 and 5 mapping. Your citadel will appear. It's a native process, just keep running maps until it happens. That's why uh, that mechanic is essentially set up to allow you to pull those early maps and focus on that early map completion straight off the mark. So citadels, they'll just appear as you complete maps. Don't stress too much about it. If it's not, if you are not getting a citadel appear, then focus on completing all the maps in that region. Now, whether you use any of the strategies I've mentioned or if you just go straight to the um, to the POE trade website, it's entirely up to you. You can do it either way or you can trade with friends. Uh, normally, if you go to the POE Discord, you might find somebody who's got a bunch of spare maps that they don't need to do. They'll trade you for maps they haven't done that you have um, and you can do a, a tit for tat trade and do map completion that way. So, you know, there's always that option. So you can do that too. But citadels, they will natively appear as you complete the atlas. There's no set mechanic to that or secret or anything like that. Just keep running maps, they'll appear. That brings me to step four, watchstones. And this is contingent on citadels. So the biggest thing that you need to understand with citadels is you need to actually read the citadels. So if you hover over the citadel, which is this little node here, it's gonna tell you how many watchstones you need to do um, to essentially spawn a conqueror. Now, normally with conquerors on the first four quadrants, as I said, it's going to basically be zero watchstones or one watchstone, two watchstones, and at the highest to get the fourth watchstone, it'll be three. Now, what I would suggest doing is when you get your first watchstones, you're gonna be moving watchstones between regions, but never socket more watchstones in a region than you need to socket. Normally, you just wanna sort of spread this out. So think of, you know, start one here, one there, one there, one there sort of thing. So you might get four watchstones from doing all four of these regions, but just be careful. Don't put all four watchstones into one region because if you've got a character that's level 81 or 85 or something like that with no gearing and then you're going to do T16 maps, you're going to just brick your atlas and you're going to need somebody to come in and bloody help you. So don't do that. What you want to do is ease in, read the atlas and work to your character's capabilities. So if it says 
um, to get a red watchstone, you know, you to get the get the red watchstone, you need to socket in one other what. Sorry, to get a conqueror to spawn, you need to socket one watchstone in. So that's what you do. You socket one watchstone in. You run it. You follow your missions as you go, and then you spawn the conqueror. You kill the conqueror. You collect the next watchstone. Now, does that mean that you put that watchstone that you've collected in this region back into the atlas in this particular citadel? No. You might take that watchstone and keep running those tier maps to continue to pull up more maps at that tier. So it might be one watchstone will get you T6 through to T10 maps. So you'll continue to run more maps in that region, pull up more maps, and then basically that will also give you the ability to horizon orb and spawn maps in other regions. So that's one other such way that you can do it. So then you'll take that watchstone that you've earned from this region, you'll plug it into this one. So you might start with one watchstone, bam. So then, okay, we go up one tier of map, we start doing harder content, we're leveling up quicker. We get the next watchstone, and then we'll go, all right, we'll jam it in this one. And now we can unlock another, potentially another watchstone. So then we'll get the next watchstone, we'll plug it in here, we'll unlock the next watchstone, then we'll unlock the next watchstone, and then you might need to do two to get to the next tier. Now, if you can do that, good for you. If you can't, put that watchstone into this area and then unlock this area, and then you'll get a watchstone there, put it in this area, unlock this, unlock the next watchstone, which will get you to here. So on, so on. That's basically the strategy of unlocking watchstones. Now, oh shit, someone wants to buy stuff, it's part of the league. Better put it on D&D right now. That's basically the strategy to unlocking more maps. So it's not a pointless process. It's just following, I guess, a sequencing chain. You're gonna use other areas of the atlas to unlock other particular areas and watchstones of the atlas. The other thing is be mindful of, I guess, when you get to Cyrusing, and this will start to happen when you get to Awaken of Four. So you'll, if you want to target certain regions based on the, um, I guess, the, the map uh, ascendancies or map atlas or map trees, whatever you want to call it. So if you want to do Valdo's Rest or whatnot, um, you need to pay attention to, or if you want to start farming Cyrus, for example, you need to pay attention to the regions that you're completing and that, and what these cues on the citadels are telling you. So if it says you need to do three, if you haven't unlocked the blue watchstone and it says you need to do three, uh, you need to socket in three stones to unlock the blue, then that's basically what you'll need to do. Um, to unlock the blue, but also being mindful that every time you light up one of these sequences here, you lock this area, and once you complete it, you cannot get this conqueror to spawn anywhere else. So as you move through your watchstones, and you get more and more watchstones, and you start to fill up your citadels, what you'll realize is that you actually need to start becoming more strategic about how you place your watchstones, because the color of the region dictates the type of watchstone that's gonna drop. So in this case, if I was to do this as it was now, and I was targeting to get a blue watchstone, but I have unlocked you know, the, um, the, the hunter for this region, I'm not gonna get a blue watchstone, I'm gonna get nothing if I've already unlocked the, the green watchstone. So for the areas that you haven't unlocked certain watchstones for, you basically wanna go back to the areas where you have unlocked other watchstones, complete maps in there, get to the Conqueror, complete the Conqueror, and you basically want to block that Conqueror from spawning into regions where you want a Conqueror you haven't done yet um, spawn, if that makes sense. Now, the way the map will work is if you have, for example, Valdo's Rest and you haven't done the Hunter, let, let's use the hunt, pick on the Hunter. Now, you've done every other Conqueror except the Hunter. Now, if you were to kill Cyrus or do Cyrus or whatever, start fresh, that Hunter will be the first priority uh, um, conqueror that will spawn because the way that the atlas works is it tries to basically push you in the direction of completing the atlas so it'll take priority on the watchstone uh, conqueror or the conqueror color that hasn't been completed yet so what i would say is if you kill cyrus or whatever as you're going through the atlas process and you get close to these you know where you've got three watchstones in every area but you've got intermittent colors and everywhere target the areas so if, if you do Cyrus, the areas where you haven't completed watchstones 
they're the ones that you should be running maps in first to trigger the conqueror that you need to spawn to spawn that final watchstone. That's where a lot of people start to get stuck in the end game. Is they sort of just do maps willy nilly all over the map. But they don't realize that there's actually a strategy. So be mindful of the colors of the watchstones that you're after. That will dictate the type of map or the type of conqueror that will spawn. And that will dictate the watchstone that will drop in that region. So when you get further into the atlas and you get into tier uh, 11 through to 13 maps that's a stage where things are going to get harder and it's going to get more stringent and you're really going to want to pay attention to the color of the watchstones i don't know if that really explains it well enough um, it's hard to explain without actually doing it physically and showing you what i mean um, and the only way i could do that is if we're in a fresh league with a reset but that's basically the gist of how watchstones work there are plenty of guides out there um, but it is somewhat tedious, but it's all about paying attention to what the citadels are telling you and paying attention to the conquerors and, and basically target farming the conquerors based on the watchstones that are still uh, open to be collected from each region. So if you know that, for example, you've got a yellow uh, conqueror spawn, um, was that um, warlord spawn here, but you know in this region you need the blue conqueror, target this region next before you do any other regions to get the blue conqueror to spawn basically and then that will drop that watchstone on the completion of that conqueror once you've done it that's how you get yourself out of the pit when you get to end game where you can't really figure out what the hell you're doing wrong that's where a lot of people get stuck and that's what you get in that mindless grind um, of just running maps willy-nilly and not really getting any completion that's pretty much the i guess the most basic tips and this video has went for about 21 minutes but it's actually quite a tedious topic talking about the Atlas uh, mapping mechanic in PoE. It's not a perfect system. There is a strategy to it. If you sort of follow what I'm saying, um, basically just read the information that's in the Atlas. So read these citadels, read what they're asking you to do to spawn the certain uh, conquerors, and that will basically guide you through to the end game. Anyway, if this sort of helps you get through the mess that is mapping in the end game for poe i hope this does um, but if you get stuck post up in the comments i'm happy to answer comments and and any other queries about this um, if this video helps you um, like and sub uh, if you think i've just rambled for 22 23 minutes then uh, drop me a dislike but until next time have a good one and bye